Most people familiar with World War II know that Hitler and most of the top Nazis were World War I veterans. Hitler himself spent four years in the trenches of the Western Front and was decorated three times for gallantry, including the prestigious Iron Cross First Class. Check out the link to my video on this subject in the end screen. Hermann Göring was a famous World War I fighter pilot and ace who was awarded Imperial Germany's highest decoration, the Pour le Mérite or Blue Max. Likewise, Rudolf Hess had also been a flyer and Joachim von Ribbentrop a cavalry officer. But when it comes to Germany's most feared Nazi after Hitler, the ruthless leader of the SS, Heinrich Himmler, his World War I service is usually dismissed or glossed over. But in fact, Himmler was a soldier in World War I. But because he didn't see combat, this aspect of his life, which had a formative effect on his personality, is often dismissed of not worthy of discussion. You may be surprised to learn that far from shirking his military responsibilities, Himmler actually served for one and a half years in the regular and reserve armies of both Imperial Germany and the Weimar Republic. He would also serve for almost three years as a Freikorps soldier during the revolutionary period of the early 1920s, including seeing some action during the 1923 Bierhol Putsch. If Adolf Hitler's sole aim in his early life was to have become an artist, then Himmler's was to have become an army officer. Neither men would achieve their dreams, their failures contributing to what they would later become. Heinrich Himmler was born in 1900 in Munich, capital city of the Kingdom of Bavaria, one of the many kingdoms and principalities that formed the German Empire. His father, Josef Himmler, had worked his way up from very little to become a schoolmaster and a tutor to the Bavarian royal family. Himmler was named for his godfather, Prince Heinrich of Bavaria, who took a friendly interest in the boy and the wider Himmler family. His father was stern and conservative, and inculcated his three sons with his politics and work ethic, and from his mother Anna Maria, Himmler gained an early adherence to Roman Catholicism. Himmler was not impressive physically, wearing spectacles and eschewing sports for more ascetic interests. But with the outbreak of war, the teenage Himmler desired above everything else to become an army officer. He joined his local cadet corps in Landshut in 1915, and as he grew to military service age, he badgered his father to use his royal connections to obtain for him a place in a good regiment as an aspiring officer. Himmler's father tried to pull the necessary strings, but the waiting list to join the 1st and 2nd Bavarian infantry regiments were too long. However, what happened next says much about Himmler's personality. He abruptly left school when he discovered that his year was liable for conscription into the army. He reasoned that if conscripted as a mere private, his chances of becoming an officer would have been lost. If he was so keen to fight, one would have thought that he would have accepted conscription and gone willingly to the front, but it appears that Himmler wanted to control the manner of his joining up. He worked for a few weeks for the Patriotic Auxiliary Service in a welfare office, until receiving the good news that his year group would not be drafted, and he returned to school to complete his education. But then on the 27th of December 1917, the 17-year-old Himmler received notice that he had been accepted as a trainee officer with the rank of Fahnenjunker in the reserve battalion of the 11th Bavarian Infantry Regiment, based near Regensburg. Basic training was not a pleasant experience for Himmler, who came from a sheltered family background, but he settled down after a few weeks of homesickness, complaints about the food and various other problems. When the training period ended, Himmler expected to be posted to a frontline battalion, but instead Himmler was sent on to another training course at Freising, 40 kilometers from his family home in Landshut, meaning he could visit home some weekends. Successfully completing his second period of training with the other recruits, Himmler again expected to be sent to the front. His older brother, Gephard, was then fighting on the Western Front as a leutnant, or second lieutenant, and Himmler was very keen to do his duty. 
But even though Germany was evidently losing the war, the army refused to truncate officer training courses. And on the 15th of September 1918, Himmler was sent on a two-week heavy machine gun course at Bamberg. Following a week's leave, Himmler returned to Regensburg and the regimental depot to help train new recruits, until finally selected for a composite company that was to be rushed to the front. By now it was November 1918, and with the political situation inside Germany unravelling, the company was stood down at the last minute, ending Himmler's last chance to see some action in World War I. Revolution erupted in Bavaria, leading to the king's abdication on the 7th of November. Then Emperor Wilhelm II abdicated and fled into exile in the Netherlands on the 9th of November, leaving a new government to make peace on the 11th of November 1918, ending World War I. One consolation for Himmler was the survival of his brother Gephard, who returned home a full lieutenant with an iron cross for gallantry. Himmler was sent to the 11th Regiment's Reserve Battalion at Regensburg, hoping that the new republic would have some use for a mostly trained officer. But instead he was assigned the inglorious task of helping to demobilize the regiment as the battalions marched back to Germany from the front. The size of the German army began to rapidly decrease, as the Treaty of Versailles made it clear that Germany would only have a purely defensive force of just 100,000 men. Himmler was told that all Fahnenjunkers from his original draft were surplus to requirements, and the 18th of December 1918, Himmler was honourably discharged at the age of 18 from the regular army after almost one year's service. His dream of becoming a second lieutenant shattered, Himmler tried to find something to do, whilst drifting towards nationalist and right-wing politics in the economic chaos of post-war Germany. Himmler had a new plan to achieve his dream of a commission in the regular army. In April 1919, Himmler joined his local Freikorps unit in Landshut, the Freikorps being right-wing paramilitary groups of former servicemen led by experienced officers and NCOs. He also obtained a place in the Oberland Freikorps. The leader of this group was Rudolf von Sabottendorf, chairman of the Tula Society, a German occultist and nationalist organization that was destined to heavily influence Himmler and the later SS, and whose emblem was the swastika. The Oberland Freikorps took part in the bloody crushing of the short-lived Munich Soviet Republic, though Himmler was not involved in any fighting. Himmler's hopes of rejoining the regular army were briefly raised when the government ordered Freikorps organizations absorbed into the armed forces, but Freikorps Oberland was not included. Receiving his school certificate in July 1919, Himmler enrolled to study agriculture at Munich Technical University. He chose this subject as he knew the course would be full of landed gentry and aristocrats, many of whom were reserve officers, and new friends like these might help him back into the army. A bout of paratyphoid fever delayed Himmler's taking up his new place, time he used to read widely, and his letters and diaries note his expression of anti-Semitic and anti-Freemason views for the first time. In October 1919, Himmler started at the university, proving a good student with plenty of friends who enjoyed an active social life. He fenced for the university and also joined the Reserve Army, the equivalent in the United States to the Army National Guard or in Britain to the Army Reserve. Inducted into the 14th Alarm Company of the 21st Rifle Brigade, this right-wing Reichsheer unit was called out several times during political agitation in Munich. In December 1919, the unit was mobilized, and Himmler, armed with a rifle, stood ready to quell unrest, but in the event was stood down. On the 16th of January 1920, a great tumult resulted from a court sentencing former army officer Count Arco to death for his assassination of Bavarian Prime Minister Kurt Eisner in February 1919. Himmler's unit planned to stage a coup, along with many other parts of the army, against the Bavarian government, but Count Arco's death sentence was commuted to life imprisonment and the crisis was diffused. In spring 1920, Himmler's military career was ended again by government decree, as reserve units were disbanded at the request of the British, French and Americans. 
All Himmler could do was join the residence reserve and a local rifle club. His army reserve service amounted to about six months. However, he was next to join another paramilitary formation, the Reichsflagge or Reich Flag, a unit created by Captain Ernst Röhm. In 1922, Himmler received two medals for his wartime military service, the War Commemorative Medal 1914-18 of the Kaufhäuser Union in March and the German Honorary Commemorative Badge of the World War in December. Politics was in disarray in Bavaria, with Hitler and famous World War I General Erich Ludendorff leading opposition to a triumvirate that ran Bavaria, led by Gustav Ritter von Kahr, whose job title was General State Commissioner, effectively dictator of Bavaria. The Reichsflagge organization declared support for von Kahr, leading Röhm and a hard core of supporters to break away and form the Reichskriegflagge, or Reich War Flag, and Himmler followed. Röhm's organization threw in its lot with Hitler and took part in the Bierhull Putsch on the 9th of November 1923, when Hitler attempted to overthrow the von Kahr government by force. Himmler, in military uniform and armed with a rifle, was the standard bearer of the Reichskriegflagge, carrying, not surprisingly given the organization's name, the old German imperial battle flag of World War I. He was by now also an NSDAP member, having joined the party in August 1923. Röhm, Himmler and the other members of the Reichskriegflagge were not part of the famous march from the Berger Breukeller Beer Hall to the Feldherrnhalle War Memorial in central Munich, led by Hitler and Göring, that ended in a gun battle between Nazis and Munich police. Instead, the Reichskriegflagge had cordoned off the army headquarters in the city and would be themselves surrounded by Reichsheer troops loyal to von Kahr. Fighting did break out, and for the first time Himmler actually saw some combat. Stuck between the soldiers defending army headquarters and more troops that arrived to break the Reichskriegflagge's siege of the complex, soldiers trapped inside the building opened fire, causing Rome's men to return fire. Two members of Himmler's unit were killed. However, after a ceasefire and negotiations, the army allowed the Reichskriegflagge to disperse, and unlike the Nazis, they were not arrested or placed on trial, Himmler simply being interviewed by the police and then released. Himmler became more closely involved with the Nazi party, rising rapidly through the ranks throughout the 1920s to become the fourth holder of the post of Reichsführer SS in January 1929. It has been noted by many historians that his failure to see any combat in World War I affected his personality and also made him the butt of many jokes by Hitler and the hard core of combat veterans that surrounded the Führer, though of course never to his face. Himmler would die under mysterious circumstances in British custody on the 23rd of May 1945 at the age of 44. That, however, will be the subject of another video in the future. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.